Good morning, Taylor. It's Wednesday. And originally today I had this great plan of making the vlog on our choir field trip. But of course that had to be cancelled. Um, but uh, I thought that today would have been a great day to talk about music. But uh, even though we don't have the field trip anymore, I can still go on with the topic. Uh, and obviously I don't know as much about music as you do, not nearly as much. But uh, I do know a little bit, and hopefully that will be enough to get us through the topic. And uh, later on in this vlog, I'm going to actually be doing something that I've never done on a vlog before. Something to look forward to. Alvin, I have to interview Dr. Hill soon. Go ahead. Wow. As always. We always no. Well, actually, there's only there's only 80 people. All right. Okay, she did not tell me she was going to put that on the bulletin. <laughs> That's kind of, I don't know, funny. But even these contain very little nourishment, so koalas have to eat a lot of them and spend almost all their waking hours doing so. So, music. The definition is actually quite simple, isn't it? It's, music is really just a variation of uh, sound patterns. Uh, music is, uh, or varies in rhythm, pitch, or timbre, uh, amplitude, loudness, all that stuff. But, uh, well, if you think about it, strictly speaking, uh, when you talk, you actually make music. I mean, the sound of your voice, the inflection, it really sort of, uh, you know, changes in different ways to convey different moods, and that's really music. But, you know, I think it's more practical to stick to a more conventional definition, uh, which is sort of this. I think, for me, music is an art form, and like... What's that car doing there? Like writing, like sculpting, photography, you know, painting, all those art forms. Music... Uh, tries to express something. You know, what's really cool about music is the way in which it uh, expresses uh, uh, some kind of message is really unique. I mean, there's no other art form in which uh, emotions are kind of conveyed through varying sound patterns. But uh, the reason music works is because humans know how to perceive it. Without human perception of these sounds, uh, well, it's just noise. Now I could go on and on about what music means to me and how music is sometimes undervalued, but, you know, that isn't going to be anything new for you. So I just wanted to give you a little bit of background, and then I'm going to, or right now actually, I'm moving into the main purpose of making this vlog, and I'm going to do something I've never done before. And that is, I'm going to take a portion of another show and uh, present it. I mean, that's a little confusing, but... Um, well, you know, all these thoughts, all this insight that I come up with, I mean, you know, it, call, it all comes from me. I mean, I don't look it up on some website and then present it as my own. Uh, but the only time that I do present, uh, the only times that I do present something from a source, I'm going to cite it. And I've only done that once, and that was in vlog one. But this time, I'm going to rip an entire section off a show. And again, it's Radiolab. This time, the topic is musical language. And uh, I was listening to it last week, and I heard something that just really surprised me, and I thought that you might appreciate it. So here goes. Okay, well, one of the uh, sections that uh, the show talked about, or one of the topics that I started off with, is how language relates to musical expression. That is, uh, the different tones of languages, and, and one thing that was closely examined were toned languages, uh, namely Mandarin Chinese. Uh, I don't know it that well. Uh, I can understand it and stuff, but I don't speak it that well. Um, I mean, the the unique thing about Mandarin Chinese, I mean, there are four tones, well, four and a half, sort of, and uh, if you say a word with a different tone, it could mean something completely different. And there's something cool about Mandarin speakers, I mean, uh, the way they use the tones is actually uh, quite consistent from person to person and even from day to day. And I thought that was pretty cool. Well, the program moved on a little bit and started talking about 
a phenomenon called perfect pitch, which I'm sure you're familiar with. Uh, but for my viewers who don't know what perfect pitch is, um, a kind of analogy I could give is, it's like having a piano in your brain. Uh, you know, you could, you can produce a certain frequency uh, uh, immediately without having, uh, you know, a, a bass note. And it also works the other way, that is, you can listen to a tone and be able to tell what frequency it is at. Uh, so, the thing about, uh, I mean, one of the things that the uh, show described, they actually interviewed a professor of music psychology, which is a really interesting subject, if you ask me. Professor of music psychology, and uh, she actually conducted an experiment at a music school she tested both English uh, speakers uh, and Chinese speakers, I mean the students at that music school, for perfect pitch. And the results were really surprising, and this is what really got me. Of the English speakers, the English speaking students rather, I should say, only 14% had perfect pitch. And uh, you know, perfect pitch is really rare. Uh, uh, the show described that in the United States, only about 1 in 10,000 people here in the U.S. have it. But of course, uh, that number includes non-musical people. But anyway, 14% of English-speaking students. But there's actually more to it. Of the Mandarin uh, Chinese-speaking students tested, 74% showed uh, uh, that they had perfect pitch. And this really blew me away. I had no idea, I mean, before, if uh, this unique sort of ability was innate or if it was, you know, learned somehow. And, uh, you know, if psychology has taught me one thing, there isn't a clear nature or nurture answer uh, to anything. It's really always a combination of the two, but still, 74% versus 14%, that's a huge difference. So uh, I'm, I've decided today to kind of investigate this a little more. Uh, oh, last week on the on my uh, field trip to Great America, I actually uh, asked Mr. Coolio about this. I asked, uh, you know, I told him the numbers and everything, and he was really astounded too. I mean, physics teacher, you know, it kind of makes sense to ask about sound waves. Well, for you viewers who seem, uh, you know, a little interested at this topic, I mean, I only presented a really small part of the episode. I'll post the link to, to a place, to a website where you can listen to the full podcast uh, somewhere. Uh, I'll post it uh, in the sidebar, I guess. Really? It's raining now. We're just not allowed to. I have to find this out right now. The first one? Hey Taylor, do you speak Mandarin? Um, no. No? Oh, no, I speak some Cantonese. Okay, you're really special. Watch it out, you'll see. Yeah. It'll become clear. This is kind of funny. I'm talking to the present and future you. <laughs> oh, that was interesting. I just I mean, talked with. I just talked with Mr. Chan for quite a bit, uh, or quite a bit about <laughs> Germany, and he actually, I didn't know that he actually took like three years of German. That's pretty cool. And the Cantonese thing. Oh, uh, one thing that I wanted to mention before, but I never got to. When I asked Mr. Cooley about the the, the pitch thing uh, last Friday, he actually told me that you know Cantonese speakers could probably would probably fall into that category also because. Well, uh, it's true that Cantonese has actually more tones than Mandarin, but I don't know. When, when I thought about it, I think it's a, Cantonese is a little bit less rigid than Mandarin is. But uh, I don't. I haven't really looked into it enough. I'm just a lay person after all. Uh, well, it's seven o'clock, and uh, you know, today after Shilin's row, I really actually wanted to go to choir practice, but. Oh, uh, it just went until 5.30 and I had some kind of appointment at 6 o'clock, and now here we are at 7. Uh, Alright. I am one of the uh, new Children's Scroll secretaries elected today, 
and uh, you know, I'm really happy to have that job. Um, well, I don't really have much else to say. I actually want to talk to you, Taylor, in the comments below. Uh, hopefully, after you've listened to the to the podcast, but you know, uh, only when you have time. <laughs>